So now I'll pass this uh, mic on to Larissa Dobriansky, who will engage in the question and uh, sessions. Thank you. Well, I think you've given a lot of um, basis for good stimulating discussion. Um, we have four questions. We're following the same pattern in the morning, but uh, they're broad, and I'm going to um, try to adapt them to, to what all of you have uh, just uh, launched. Um, we have questions uh, along the lines, state of affairs, challenges, as Rich said, examples, case studies, and lessons learned. Um, and I'll start with the first question. Um, this is broad, and I'm going to try to guide this. What are the regulatory and institutional implications of the progressing programs to capture the net benefits of distributed and demand side resources? Now, in listening across all of you, um, now I am a lawyer, and so I'm on the regulatory side. Um, I listen across, but there are different visions here. Um, a lot will depend here on kind of what is the long-term vision. Are we looking at, um, uh, let's say, just incremental changes to the utility system, or are we looking at more fundamental types of reforms? And this is going to be very much affected by the nature of the policy mandates. So I pose this to you. Um, in both the United States and um, uh, India, um, particularly, uh, it's not all national in the United States, but there's some very uh, progressive states. But certainly in India, huge now distributed resource targets. I mean, these go well beyond demand response, demand side management. Uh, we've heard, moving from the first panel to this one, huge uh, renewable energy, uh, 175 gigawatt, um, uh, solar PV on the roof, um, electric vehicles, energy storage, um, you know, I could go on. And similarly, we see across the United States and our progressive states very similar uh, stringent targets for reducing greenhouse gas emissions, making far more stringent renewable portfolio standards, et cetera. Um, and what are the implications of these policy mandates converging with technology advancements, converging with changing consumer needs expectations. I think they're placing some very new and pressing demands on the utility regulatory systems. And I'll also just raise this for your consideration. Um, in my own experience in California, um, California came out and um, similarly with the Indian experience, uh, smart grid planning, you know, um, uh, CEO Meta mentioned uh, the building blocks and CEO um, Sin uh, for smart grid um, and how you're progressing this and also the great potential. But you know something, and they projected out here it was literally five to ten years. But then with the policy mandates for distributed resources, the more that these were entering into the marketplace, the more they were changing the whole landscape and considerations of what type of regulatory reforms, what would be the really role of the utility, particularly vis-a-vis -vis prosumers, uh, consumers already generating, third parties, uh, providing services to the grid uh, for the benefit of the grid, um, you know, for systems needs. Um, and as they moved along, do you know they've had to completely change their smart grid planning? It isn't anything like where they started in addressing demand response. Now they're looking, you know, uh, alas, Stephen mentioned, an integrated grid that fully takes into account these distributed resources, and now they're working on systematized methods for valuing and monitoring those resources. So the considerations have become, well, how much are we going to put into CAPEX? How much are we going to put into OPEX? And this also goes to the regula regulatory issues that um, was mentioned by, um, and I hope I'm not going <laughs> to you know, slaughter the pronunciation. Um, it's um, uh, dupe, uh, dupata, uh, dupe, <laughs> I'm sorry, um, dupe kati, 
Uh, I hope I got it. Sorry, excuse me. But, you know, you've got to justify the costs and the benefits to the customer. Um, but if there was a different allocation between CAPEX and OPEX, you may well be able to better justify the benefits, and the benefits may come more quickly than the utility scale smart grid investments. Uh, so these are the kinds of um, issues. What type of grid are we envisioning in the future? That type of grid, more a super legacy smart grid or a distributed grid, is going to materially affect the vision of the utility, its roles, its functions, um, the kind of compensation schemes, uh, relationships, interactions with third parties, the consumers, uh, rate design, et cetera. And then in all of this, we've got quite challenging goals, I mean, in terms of efficiency, flexibility, innovation, um, sustainability, um, could go on, resiliency, uh, you know, these pull and tug, I think, utilities in every direction. Um, how can we use these enabling technologies, smart grid, and I'll also put in here smart microgrids, uh, that on a micro level endowed similarly with information communications technologies, advanced power controls. So with this, um, how would you address what are the implications, but kind of what is your vision of the road on which things are traveling. But like I said, I posited that both countries are really setting very significant distributed energy targets, and the proliferation of these distributed energy resources needs to be planned for and what effects they're going to potentially have on the grid.